Focusing on the upcoming elections, how could question 744 affect our education system? 7 News reporter Janelle Mitchell has a story coming up. Plus, who came away with the Irene Ryan nominations for the theater production of Nowhere Fast? Also, how did the Ranger football team do against Langston? Josh Steven is in with the latest results. Keep it here, 7 News starts now. From the campus of Northwestern Oklahoma State University, Honored by the Oklahoma Broadcast Education Association two years in a row for the best collegiate newscast in Oklahoma. This is 7 News. Hello and thank you for choosing 7 News today. I'm Joe Perez. And I'm Ashton Gaming. Our top story today focuses on the upcoming elections. State question 744 will be voted on in the November 2nd election. 7 News reporter Janelle Mitchell shows us why it is important for people to educate themselves prior to heading into the ballot box. When it comes to state question 744, the answer is always no. We can afford 744. The answer must always be no. 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 Vote yes on 744. State question 744 is stirring up quite a controversy all over Oklahoma. If approved, this question would make the state's K-12 public school budget a priority. The state question would amend the state constitution so that lawmakers would be forced to raise Oklahoma's per pupil spending average to at least the same level as the regional average. Governor Brad Henry believes that 744 is not the way to go. He says that it would result in major tax increases or major cuts to other critical state agencies. The Oklahoma Highway Patrol and the Oklahoma Department of Corrections are just some of many of the state agencies that could be impacted. Correctional facilities face many budget difficulties already, but if State Question 744 passes and the impact of the budget does come true, there may be catastrophic consequences for public safety ahead. Other people believe that 744 will allow school districts to lower class sizes, hire teachers who were recently laid off, which would increase the stability of Oklahoma's economy. Yes on 744.com tells us that Oklahoma can afford state question 744 if we end billions of dollars in tax breaks for special interests, eliminate millions in wasteful spending, and by cutting politicians' perks. Thanks, Janelle. As November's election date gets closer, the Oklahoma governor's race is definitely heating up between Mary Fallon and Jerry Askins. It's not just the state of Oklahoma watching everything they say and do. Oklahoma's governor race has caught the nation's attention. That's right. One of Fallon's comments from last week's debate at the University of Central Oklahoma has captured the attention of those outside our state. She said, quote, being a mother and a wife is an important part of who I am as a person. I have been a businesswoman and served both state and federal government, but I think my proudest achievement is raising my wonderful children. As for Fallon's opponent, Askins is single and has no children. Askins, Askins responded to Fallon's comment saying that none of the governors have ever been mothers, and she was surprised that this was even brought up as qualifications. And the comment became a hot topic for, nation, for national media outlets and even television shows, including The View. Jerry Askins appeared on ABC's Good Morning America earlier this week to discuss the issue. According to Good Morning America, Fallon was also asked to appear on the program, but she respectfully declined the show. In health news today, if you suffer from depression, hair loss, or have trouble losing weight, you may be one of 10 million Americans suffering from a type of thyroid disorder a disorder one local woman deals with every day. It's a disorder that affects more people than diabetes and obesity combined. A misdiagnosis that nearly 10% of Americans may have, but not even know it. It's called hypothyroidism, a common disorder in the thyroid. Thyroid is a little organ that's right here, just below your Adam's apple. It's kind of butterfly shape and basically it secretes hormones that when the brain tells it to that will um, stimulate your body and, and increase the metabolism. Things like your heart rate, sweating, when you need energy that's what happens. Melissa Graybill, a 31-year-old Alvo resident and pharmacy technician at Holder Drugs, went to see her physician with specific symptoms related to a heart condition and left the office with a mystery diagnosis solved. I kind of thought, well, you know, I'm getting older, but then I should still have some sort of energy. 
and I could sleep. I could come home after, you know, during lunch and take on my lunch break and take a nap and then barely make it through the afternoon, come home and sleep again and then sleep all night. I was probably more irritable. My coworkers will probably tell you it did, it did affect it more than I can tell you. That's when Melissa decided to go and get checked by her local physician. And he checked my throat and felt this huge um, lump. And so that's when he said, let's get you to the hospital. And I did an ultrasound. And the ultrasound showed there was a nodule, probably like this big, on my right side of my thyroid. She underwent surgery to remove the malignant thyroid. Now, Melissa must take a pill each day to regulate her metabolism. For hypothyroidism, it's usually they give them Synthroid. Synthroid is synthetic. We make it um, and it's really identical to uh, what your body produces. But today, Melissa says she is more active and has more energy than ever before. I don't come home and take a nap every day, every day anymore and like right now I'm redoing my house and so I spend every hour doing that. After being diagnosed and having the condition under control, Melissa now advocates to others about the importance of having your thyroid checked. I've actually had a couple people that I've had surgery and have come to me and I've been able to tell them my experience, which makes me feel better. If I can ease someone's fears, I guess, of going through the same thing I went through, I, that's what I mean, I do. I mean, that makes me feel good, I guess. Now there are a few symptoms doctors say to look for if you suspect yourself of having a low thyroid. Look for changes in your mood, behavior such as depression, lack of interest, lethargic or the feeling of being tired all the time, inability to lose weight or a constant increase in your normal weight range, all which can be checked by doing a simple blood test at your doctor's office. Northwestern hosted the best robotics competition for high school students this past weekend. We'll take you to see the latest inventions on display. Plus, goblins and ghouls will be taking over Northwestern this week during Halloween. Find out where the best place is to trick or treat and possibly spook yourself. Keep it here. We'll be right back. You're watching 7 News with Ashton Gamey, Joe Perez, Campus Watch with Sing Sing Lu, and Sports with Josh Stevens. This is 7 News. Global warming. Some say irreversible consequences are 30 years away. 30 years? That won't affect me. your child the start they need at bornlearning.org. kind of have that ADD thing to where I can't really pay attention that well. I might as well just drop out. So I bounced from like foster home to foster home. Dropped out of high school my junior year. I was hanging out with some people. Now I realize I shouldn't have. They join gangs, start doing drugs, try to sell drugs. It distracts you from everything around you. You're always having to watch your back. You can't really be yourself. The one person who really got me to go back into school was my mom, my mother. My parents were the people that helped me the most. I need them to know that it really does help me that they're there for me. Welcome back. Samaria.
Peoria High School students will get a preview of Northwestern next Saturday. The university will host its annual Ranger Preview here at the Alva campus. Each year, Ranger Preview provides high school students with an opportunity to get to know the university. And this year, all the high school students who attended this event will be admitted to the university as a full-time student, and they'll also receive a $400 scholarship. Students are encouraged to pre-register, so if you're planning on coming, to, coming, make sure you go to Northwestern's website and click on the Ranger Preview icon to register. You can also register by calling this number on your screen. Three Northwestern students, uh, theater students have received nominations for KCACTF for the performance in the play Nowhere Fast performing in, for performed in the first weeks of this month. They each received an Irene Ryan nomination and the students are sophomores Sarah Acosta, senior Charlie Burns, and senior Casey Russell. Sarah Costa played Virginia Louise and Casey Russell, who played Mama, are taking in the new experience as their first nomination for an Irie Ryan. This is Charlie Burns' second nomination. The students shared, excuse me, the students shared with us how they feel about their nominations. That was really a big deal to me, I guess, because I didn't think that I had any chance for it since I was new. And I was just really surprised. I think that I have some connection with her because even though I'm the eldest, I'm still like always the little sister of the groups that I'm in. And yeah, I think that helped me connect to her a lot. And if I didn't have that, I'm sure it would have been a lot different. I, w I probably wouldn't have gotten to know Irene. Okay. <laughs> it makes me so happy. I've, I've always strived for this award and I achieved it two years ago. I fell short of it last year, but I really wanted it this year, and so I went for it, and I got it. I really did connect with my character a lot because I, I like to be the, the happy person in my family. I like to be the one that brings joy to everyone, you know, no matter the circumstances. And I think that was a lot of what my character was, and so I took that personal experience and built from it. It was very exciting for me because I've never won one before and I've always wanted to win one. And um, it was just so special and I was so excited to be, grow as an actor and be able to accomplish that. I loved my character. I think we became a combination person. Um, she was just such such a good person and I wanted to be able to be her and grow up and hold my family together. <laughs> Thank you 7 News reporter Becky Burke. And now the students will compete in February when the Northwestern Theater Department travels to KCACTF festivals. It was an important preliminary weekend for some area high school students. Students gathered to participate in Mall Day here at Northwestern last Saturday for the best competition. With their different invention and plans on displays, the students at Best Robotics took the gym floor of the personal field house to show off their robots they've been working on for nearly four weeks. Today is a practice day for their robots so they can use the field over here and um, try out their robots, see what works, what doesn't work, and then they have two weeks from today they'll be back for the competition. So this is kind of a trial and error day. Additionally, we have a bunch of table displays set up over here. That's part of the best award. There's several components that go into that, and so those will be judged here shortly as well. We met one senior contestant who talked about the preparations and the idea behind the project of properly called Total Recall. Our booth is, we wanted to make it kind of an industrial look to it. So we did it with like the flooring as of the walls and floor. And then our centerpiece usually rotates, but it's not working at the moment. And so we also have like a timeline over there of all our past teams and stuff. And then we just have like descriptions and pictures from building the robot and stuff. Meharry says it's a good program for students in this area. Although Mall Day was just a, excuse me, a practice day, the students still have two weeks until the final judging set to take place October 29th and 30th. The Academic Success Center at Northwestern has seen some changes. 
and they have uh, read and they're ready to show them off for the students who haven't taken advantage of the services yet there is still a chance for you to see what you're missing and an, op an opening will take place in the success center um, this friday and it should be around 11:30 in the morning in the industrial education building room 113 students will be able to participate in the educational uh, programs games meet the tutors and learn about the types of assistance available at the center. Well, Halloween is just around the corner, and this year, you don't have to go to a big city to get scared. Northwestern Student Orga Organizations will host a haunted house event Saturday, th excuse me, starting this Saturday through Sunday from 7 to 11 each night. The haunted house will be held in the basement of Vincent Hall here on campus. Admission for students is $4, but if you want to help out the local shelters, you can bring a canned food item and receive a dollar off of your admission. Also, South Hall will host a trick-or-treat event for local children, so bring your kids and friends for some games and candy treats this Sunday. And during the last two weekends, Ranger football has seen some success. How did they do on the road against Langston? 7 News' Josh Stevens is in with the latest football and Ranger basketball news coming up. Keep it here. Sports is next. Tick. Massive heat waves. Heat waves. Severe droughts. Tick tick. Tick tick. Devastating devastating hurricanes. Tick tick. Tick tick. Tick tick. Tick tick. Tick. Our future is up. Tick tick. To you. Tick. Go to fightglobalwarming.com while there's still time. Anyone else? My name is David. And in eight years, I'll be an alcoholic. I do. I'll start drinking in middle school, just at parties. But my parents won't start talking to me about it till high school. And by then, I'll already be in some trouble. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. The thing is, my parents won't even see it coming. So start talking Who's next? before they start drinking. The bear climbed over the mountain, the bear climbed over the mountain, the bear climbed over the mountain, and what do you think he saw? What do you think he saw? What do you think he saw? The bear climbed over the mountain, the bear climbed over the mountain, the bear climbed over the mountain, and what do you think he saw? I was hanging out with some people. Now I realize I shouldn't have. The work was so hard. It was just going fast, fast, fast. I got kicked out of school and nobody cared about me, so I don't care. I sort of got messed up into gangs and other stuff. School was very difficult. I was expelled from school. I mean, the one person who really got me to go back into school was my friend Kevin. At my friend's graduation, I'm going to be the loudest one there. Because if you don't have anybody while you're in school, then there's not really a way to get through it. The Northwestern football team wins their fourth and fifth consecutive games of the season these past two weekends, beating Baycone College at home 51-14 and beating Langston 20-13 on the road. The Rangers took the field against Baycone for their second home game of the season and came away with a big win, which gave them the 23 ranking in the NAIA Coastal Poll. Northwestern led the entire game as they moved to 3-0 in conference play. The football team has also traveled to Langston to play the 21st ranked Lions. Nate Guillory scored the first touchdown of the game in the second quarter to put Northwestern on top, 7-0. However, Langston made a 22-yard field goal right before the half as they trailed 7-3. In the second half, Guillory scored his second touchdown of the game. Langston bounced back with a score of their own to pull within three points. However, shortly after, Northwestern's Jared Jackson found the end zone to seal the deal. In other sports, 7 News sports reporter Johnny Gonzalez will inform us on how the Lady Rangers have been preparing for this season. Johnny? Thanks, Josh. Now, while most team seasons are starting to wind down, and particularly cross-country soccer and who can forget football, there comes a transition. This being partly from a change in the weather, but I talked with 27th year head Lady Ranger basketball coach, Melvin Barton, who foresees a few more W's on this season schedule, which features talent from not only in-state Sooner Athletic Conference rivals, but also from neighboring states. The month of November is the prime opportunity to get to see Barton's team in action as they start the season with a five-game homestay, which begins with hosting the rival Bulldogs 
of Swatsu on November on the November 2nd, which will be at 6 o'clock. Here are a few more games coming up, and I have to remind you that from the 2nd to the 20th of November, that all these games are home games. And they'll be right here on the Northwestern campus in Percival Fieldhouse. So with all that, I'll turn it back over to Josh at the Sports Desk. Thanks, Johnny. That'll do it here for sports. Keep it here. We'll be right back. In the classroom, I turn my head over this way, and there's a game banger looking at me, you know, mad dog me throwing signs up under the table. I feel real scared for my life. And during that time, I wouldn't go to school. My mom would tell me, like, what are you doing for yourself? You're not doing nothing. She encouraged me to go back to school. My neighborhood is a dangerous place. What's pushed me to graduate is my mother walking down the aisle, hearing her scream for me. I want to graduate from my mom. She watched the distance yell at me, you got to graduate. You got to get out of high school so you can get your diploma. And I'm going to make it, and I'm going to be somebody in life. Glucose plus oxygen equals carbon dioxide plus water. Hey, dear, what's up? And energy. Superior vena cava, pulmonary artery, coronary artery. I'd like to pass them back to you now. For chemical types your work. and endoplasmic reticulum with ribosome in three o'clock already. And She's got the drive, the energy, the heart, and the talent. Pre-med. But she wouldn't be here without your help. Please support the United Negro College Fund. Because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. My name's Lisa, and in nine years I'll be an alcoholic. Hi, Lisa. I'll start drinking in eighth grade, and I'll do some things I don't really want to do. So by the time my parents talk to me about it, alcohol won't be my only problem. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. So start talking before they start drinking. My parents won't believe it could happen to me. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at what is coming up on campus. Miss Northwestern's pageant will be held at Herod Hall Auditorium this Sunday at 4. As part of the Northwestern Concert Series, the Alley Cats will host a concert also in Herod Hall next Tuesday at 7.30. And trick-or-treaters in Alva will hit the streets to go door-to-door -door and get candy this Sunday evening. Well, I can't believe the Miss, North the Miss Northwestern pageant is so early this year. Did you? Because it's usually in February, isn't it? I, I believe so. Yes, yeah, actually, it's the first of the year. But, you know, we did have Miss Cinderella early, so I guess we're just kind of That's wrapping true. things early. But on top of that, we this week is Halloween, so we have the Haunted House. Are you really excited about it? I am, yeah. Well, Halloween is one of my favorites. Are you going to go check it out? Uh, yeah, I probably will. Well, I think it's cool that you get the tan good, you take it to the shelter, you get a dollar off, it's $3 admission. That's not very much at all. No, not at all. Pretty cheap. I heard it's supposed to be scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so head on out to the haunted house. It's only $3 of the can good. That's going to do it for us today. We'll see you next week.